everybody, and welcome back to our Hersey Hoops podcast. My name is Connor Durkin. Alongside me is my fellow host, Connor Krebs. Today we are joined with senior Jack Genualdi and, of course, Coach Scott, head coach of the boys' basketball team. Thank you guys for coming in today. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Favorite part of my week, as always. <laughs> yes, sir. Krebs, you want to yeah. take uh, the first sure. question here? We've now had a good amount of games played so far this season. What have you guys learned so far about yourselves as a team? Um, well, first, I like Coach Scott said uh, earlier this week, we thought we were going to be like one of the more grittier teams, but because we're undersized and we're lacking some skill. And I've seen that part of us um, in certain parts of practice and sometimes versus different schools, but honestly, I feel like we've lost that grittiness, but um, I feel like we could turn it on and off when we want to. Like against Nutrier, we definitely had that grittiness, but last night against Barrington, we didn't. So, uh, yeah, you know, there's a there's a quote we put on the board before every game, you know, like we can't win until we can keep from losing. And I think right now we've had a hard time keeping from losing, whether it be turnovers or shot selection, or inability to move the ball. Um, and these are all things that are correctable, but they take a high level of focus to be able to correct them. So I think it's going to take some time. You know, I think everybody in competitive sports wants things right away, right? We want the answer right away. We want things to be solved right away and to improve and move on and then work on some other new skill. I think we have to really, really develop um, our shortcomings for a sustainable period of time. And that said, we've tested ourselves with one of the better schedules in the state so far. But, you know, that's not giving us any solace on how we feel right now. And, And Jack made a great point, like, we have been turning it on and off, and I don't think that that's safe. Um, I don't think that's a safe way to approach it, and I think we really have to shift that. And it's it's become evident in things like, you know, transition defense and sprinting back. It was rebounding for a while. It's taking care of the ball sometimes. And those are all things, you know, that are my responsibility as a coach to make sure these guys understand how hard it is to win. Um, and we'll get there, but it's it's going to take some time for us, and we're definitely – a work in progress right now as we move forward. Yeah, I mean, another thing you mentioned is just, you know, height-wise, you guys are a little undersized compared to some of the other teams. Like, I mean, look at the Meadows game. They had that really big center. I'm drawing a blank on his name. Nikolic Wilson. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when you guys He's are... He's kind of like a giant... He looks like a giant version of Krebs, <laughs> kind of. <laughs> Honestly, I kind of like... Eh, nah. I wouldn't. Mm. Yeah, his hair, at least. Oh, his hair. Yeah, I guess, yeah. Hair, right? He's like a 265 pound. That kid, of that kid, since I've last seen him, has grown like five inches. That was yeah. really the craziest thing I've ever seen. Like the, the weight meter to go up like that. Yeah. <laughs> what, is it, what is that called when you move straight up? The exponential, uh, exponential growth. Exponential growth. My wife would be proud of me for that term. That's excellent. Great job. I knew Jack would know. That's, I, all I had to do was go like this. And uh, Mr. Popono. Yeah. We yeah. have Mr. Popono. We'll, we'll talk today. about that later. It's in jeopardy, so we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, when you guys are playing against some of those bigger teams, though, what are the keys to success at stopping all those points in the paint? Um, well, for big guys, I know um, – at least in terms of rebounding, you really well. I, this goes for anybody on the court, really. Uh, you always know. Everyone knows to box out your man, but sometimes that's not enough when you're going against really big guys. You got to actually get your butt into their knees so that they literally go over your back, or that like they just want to completely get out of the paint. And so those second chance points, like you could, you simply cannot allow them if you're looking to beat that team. Yeah, and I think the most important thing is it's you know. We can't look at it as a one-man job. Like, it's not Cat's job to stop, you know, Will Grzynski last night or Jackson's job to guard Nikolic Wilson. We have to have help, and then we have to recover fast. And those are all things we're working on on a daily basis. We'll get there. Yeah, and then sort of switching topics now uh, to this next game on Friday here. We got our first home game against Wheeling. Um, And now, how are you guys looking forward to that one, knowing that we're going to actually be allowed to have fans and since it is our first home game, I'm sure a lot of students are going to be turning up. Um, and it's been a first time for a long time, I think. Yeah, turn up. Yeah, I'm I'm super excited. It's the whole last year we didn't have any fans. Yeah, the parents, it's insane. Um, I got, like, just being in the Orange Crush during football season, I was like, dang, this is going to be awesome during basketball season, too. And just in, like, the, uh, the Carter Gymnasium, like, 
everything's a lot louder than it is like say on like in like a football stadium like yeah. it's more it's jam packed true. so like um i would say like if things are going good like during the game like the fans are just gonna be like amplifying our um like our tempo we, we're gonna be getting less <laughs> what's your favorite since you are part of the oc what's your favorite chant uh, to do during the football games he, yeah, Jack is one of the leaders. I forgot about that. Yeah, he's shout out Slow Shea for getting. He was on Slow Shea in the fall, <laughs> yelling at freshmen. <laughs> one of the one of the premier moments of Jack's life, getting on Slow Shea. Yeah, that was such an honor and blessing. <laughs> um, hashtag blessed. Hashtag blessed. Thanks, Slow Shea. <laughs> um, so my favorite chant I got I gotta say is uh, either freshman bedtime or uh, to make you famous makes yeah, sense or. This year, the band did a really good job. They they would start playing on their I don't know what instrument it is. They would, they would start going oh oh yeah oh 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 yeah. like Seven Nation Army. That's that's a great song yeah. and it's fun to chant. I thought you'd be like a huge like peel of a banana guy. Yeah, I'm, that's what I, I would could see said. Jack that's really would, getting into. Yeah, that's what I would have said if I'm honest. Go bananas and then yeah. just going uh, you know yeah. hair banging. <laughs> I feel like, honestly I'm gonna be honest. That was that peak during like the Jake Lavin uh, Cuba see, era. I could yeah. see that. Yeah. This what an era that was, though. Shout that? out Lavin and Cuba. That Shout was that was quite an era. era. That that was a great era. I was <laughs> I was blessed to be a freshman during that time. Hashtag but. blessed. I was I was up in the stands. I'm, I'm like, oh, I like don't even I don't even remember who you were in eighth was. grade. Dude. No, I know yeah. who mine was when I was a freshman. Pick and uh, yeah Martin. and Martin. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Marty, man. Shout out, Party Marty. He came this summer. Yeah, yeah. He was, there, he, he was at a few games um, earlier in the year. He's at Iowa State now, doing his thing. All right, so back back to the questions. Um, you guys have played some of the best teams in the state so far, as you kind of alluded to, Coach. How has that prepared you for Wheeling, and how do you think it will prepare you for the rest of your schedule? Yeah, you know, I think those, you know, even though we haven't come out on you know the left hand column of a lot of those games, you get a sense of the the strategy and scheme that teams employ at a really high level okay so like for example like wheeling plays a lot of zone um and they're going to play some two two one full court press we've seen that now from palatine a little bit um we saw it from Kerry grove we saw it from um we saw a little one three one at new trier and then i think when when you have those experiences you know, against teams with a lot of length and a lot of skill. It prepares you when you see that zone again. And I'm not saying that Wheeling zone is at a different level than Nutrier's is. However, like, Nutrier goes, you know, 6'9", six, 6'7", six, seven, six, seven, right? Whereas Wheeling is, you know, I think Iggy Han is about 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and the Hutchinson kids are 6'4". So I think, like, it just makes, like, when you've, when you've gone against it at a really high level, it helps you have some confidence um, going into those games and you know switching defenses we've seen that a lot with Stevenson and New Trier and then you know Barrington yesterday um, and ha and trying to defend those teams too because those teams are really skilled offensively I mean there's a reason why you know there'll be two or three or four players on the court playing in college basketball next year so I think going against that although it's not the most like confidence building at the time you know when we're really working to get you know, one stop or two stops or a punch with three stops in a row, it does, you know, in looking back on it, give us some, you know, some reassurance that, hey, if we can stop Nutria at what they're trying to do offensively, we can stop pretty much anybody. And then kind of following that up with a lot of younger guys on your team, like Hop, Rig, and Grove, do you think it's been very helpful for them playing all these tougher games right away out of the gate, or do you think it's kind of slow them down how do you see that for them you know it depends i think that's a great question first of all uh you know I, I don't think they're probably at their peak confidence right now but like what that builds if if you have the right emotional intelligence psychology term all right if you have the right emotional psych like intelligence and mental toughness you can understand that what's coming next you're going to be prepared for based on what's coming what's came yesterday you know and we always you know overestimate yesterday and overestimate tomorrow but like we underestimate today and i think today they've gotten a lot better based on what they've learned from their past experiences so far this year and carson and jackson and jared um 
are all pretty level-headed guys. You know, there's a, there's a lot of growth that has to happen there from a basketball standpoint, and they know that, and they're excited for that too. But I think, like, you know, Carson having played varsity football, you know, Jackson having played high-level AAU and things like that, and then um, Jared, you know, kind of coming in and, and being as fearless as he is as a person – you know, I think they're they're going to learn from those experiences too. You're obviously humbled by certain experiences in varsity basketball, but I think they've learned a lot from that too. And finally, a last question here before we get to the unscripted. Oh yeah, Jack. baby. <laughs> Jack, what is your favorite Hersey basketball memory? Um, you got to give me a second. For sure. Um, we got that trash can still. That one, that one's the pretty. Dumpster. That's the, the dumpster. Big one for the yeah. First yeah. Time. Okay, so I. I got, I'll do that one where uh, Randall just picked up Braden before the Wii game and just threw him into the trash can. Or, no, it wasn't even a trash can. It, it was, was the dumpster. It was the dumpster. <laughs> and that was one of the most funny parts of my entire life. <laughs> and, and also, I don't know, just like kind of just doing things outside of basketball with the team. Like, um, it was a really great time when uh, we went down to Illinois Wesleyan and got ice cream and, uh, and I don't know who it was, but he had some horrible flavor. Yeah, I don't know. And or no, Meninga didn't get anything. <laughs> that was that was when we went to the South Side. So we went to play Brother Rice in Beverly, and there's a famous ice cream shop in Beverly called Rainbow Cone. You guys ever okay. been to Rainbow Cone? No. no. I don't know. I, I would say it's worth the drive. It's probably an hour drive to get to Beverly, but like it's a it's a unique place. It's a totally unique yeah. experience. Yeah. And you know we had played Brother Rice before, and Brother Rice is obviously really good. Yeah. So you know. Um, Max was a little upset from the game, but then he chose to conscientiously object from eating ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like, like Max, get a get a rainbow cone, get a milkshake, get a banana split. The Rig Brothers got banana splits. I remember. Yeah. I remember they had the matching banana splits. Yeah. And then J- Max was like, I don't like ice cream. I don't want our. Right like, <laughs> okay. like, no. <laughs> <laughs> so that was that was a That's unique really experience. You know, <laughs> I'm looking forward to the home opener too. Like I remember. Last year, you know, talking with Rug before the Meadows game at Meadows or even the Meadows game at home, you know, and both teams were ranked. And at the time we played Meadows, I think we had one loss, they had zero at home. And that ended up being a great game. And you look in the stands and there's, you know, like Jack said, 50 parents there. <laughs> Whereas, you know, in a normal year, there have probably been I would have been packed 2,500 yeah. people there. Yeah. So, I th- you know, that experience was kind of the pageantry of high school basketball was kind of stripped from that year. Which obviously is a tough pill to swallow, but you know we got over it. But now I think these guys have to they have to earn their fans a little bit too, you know, because you know, kids have a lot of things to do, man. You know, and they're not going to come see a mediocre product. Like we got to give them a product that they're happy to see and um, excited, you know. And you guys were <laughs> great at the Meadows game. I couldn't help but laugh even hearing some of the things I, you I said. I was definitely a part of that. I was I was yelling at Cam for like 90% of that bash. Jalaka game. was great. Oh, Jalaka was doing really good. <laughs> Jalaka was hilarious. Um, me, me and Jalaka were pretty close. It was He was saying a lot of stuff. It was really funny. I even He even got Cam to laugh. I thought that was yeah, funny. He, yeah. Cam was like snickering at I it. I think that's the ultimate goal. Like, yeah. Not to make – like a good high school basketball, is, basketball player is never going to be like, oh, man, I'm so worried about that kid in the crowd. But when you get them to laugh and at least yeah. acknowledge, I think that's funny. Like, we used to have seats for the Milwaukee Brewers right by the on-deck circle. They okay. my dad's season tickets. So me and my friends in high school or college would go and, you know, try to get those guys to at least acknowledge us. Yeah. And a lot of times they don't speak English. <laughs> so, like, you, you have to, like, kind of be creative. And I remember the first guy that I really got to laugh in that setting was Ken Griffey Jr. Oh, wow. Right? Okay. Yeah. By criticizing his video game. Like, I, we told him his video game yeah. stunk, right? And, like, <laughs> video game sucks. You're the best player by far. Everyone else can't hit. Like, you know, and he would, like, look at it. He's like, that's not true. Like, you know, like, when they can converse with you and, like, yeah. have a good time with it, I think that's that's the point of good student sections. What video game did he make? Ken, Ken Griffey yeah. Jr. Baseball on Super Nintendo was, Whoa. like, an elite video I, game. I in have. The, I have. I like, think I own that, actually. Yeah, in, like, the late 90s. So like they didn't have the they didn't have the rights to any of the players' names except him. So it was Ken Griffey Jr. Then a bunch of made up. So players. think about like NCAA where they're all like fake names or whatever, yeah, and yeah. then there's just like one person who's like completely overpowered and better than everyone right. else, and it's yeah. just like. But they were based on people. Yeah, and then they were based on like city names, like so like, you know the San Francisco 
Giants would have a guy named like Brook Bridge or not Brook Bridge, but like Golden Bridge, you know, like for the Golden Gate Bridge. Oh, nice. You know, so it was it was creative, but at the same time, like he was by far the best player and like couldn't be competed with. So if you were the Mariners, you automatically won. You know, yeah. so we were giving him a hard time and like making fun of guys like batting gloves and like ankle, you know, protectors hey, yeah. is always funny too. That's funny. Okay. But but the more you know, to Krebs' point, like the more you know about them, the easier that someone was literally because. doing research behind me and just like spitting it out to us. Like yeah. they were like, "Mom, bro," and then like yeah. he was like giving us like stat lines to like yeah, max you gotta and stuff. Re- you gotta have a research guy. Yeah, you gotta have a research guy. You gotta have the boots on the ground. Yeah, some advanced chirp. Yeah. yeah. Life. <laughs> <laughs> uh, moving on to the unscripted portion here. Yes. Krebs, do you want to take the, the sure. first one? Yeah, I got it. All right, so first question. I think this has become one of Coach Scott's favorites for sure. Who is your celebrity crush? Mm. All right, so I know Kat said this already, and he's going to give You're me... You're going to give us a repeat? He's going to give me crap for this. I'm giving you a repeat. I don't care because she actually has been my celebrity crush, Rihanna. I can actually name her songs. Yeah, we went through this last week. Like, they didn't even know any Rihanna songs. I, I still don't, but... What's your favorite Rihanna song? All right. Umbrella. Or okay, uh, or I do know that one. Love the Way You Lie by Eminem featuring Rihanna. That is another good That's one. Those are bangers. Song. I actually do know that one, too, just because it's Eminem, but... Umbrella's I, a throwback, too. That's a nice call. Umbrella, I know that one, so I'm proud that I know one. She is yeah. my woman crush every day. Really? Yes. Honestly, I that surprised me. I think I don't like know anyone else. Uh, two in a row, too. That's crazy. Have you seen? I think Rihanna's peak, and we talked about this. Like I asked Cat, like if there's a music video that like he thinks Rihanna's at her peak, like the Love in a Hopeless Place music video. Where it's like dun 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 dun. You know what I'm talking about? Oh yeah, yeah. Great music video. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what just that? gets you going. It's like, like probably oh nine. Oh wow. Really? It's that old. Yeah. I don't know. I'd have some. How time. old is Rihanna? Does she even like come out with like music anymore? Yeah. Or she does some hooks. You know. I don't, Isn't she? Yeah. Wait, is she playing at the Super Bowl or is that? I don't know who's playing. Know. Super Bowl. I think I she is. <laughs> no, I think it is Rihanna, and it's like two other people. I, I, don't, I don't know. I'm low key a huge Dua Lipa guy now. Okay, Dua Lipa. I know. I, I know a lot of Dua Lipa Jack, songs. Jack shut that down pretty quickly. I'm, I'm fine. Levitating. I like that song. You want that? I can't listen to this new radio. Yeah, music. no, it's me either. Good. Me either. I don't like it's it either. Ears. I don't listen to the radio ever. Big anymore. maturity over here. We, we need. We need. 2013 back. Give me Beyonce <laughs> and Rihanna. What was, uh, what was the Spotify rap like for you this year? Um, I actually have Apple Music. It's a way. Oh. Be- it's a way better. Shameless um, plug. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Who is your That's most listened to artist? Uh, I got I got Kid Cudi. He's probably Kid Cudi, which was expected. He's like good like, underrated Kid actor. Really? Kid Cudi. Does, does he yeah, act? Scott yeah. Muscutty. Yes, I. He was in. He was also in one of the scary movies or whatever. He was oh. in one of those. He was in too. a television show on HBO called How to Make It in America. Mm, okay. It's a good show. Good show. He's a good actor, though. Actually, what about you? Who was number one? For mine you? was Mac Miller. Really? Yeah. Mac Miller. Big oh, Mac okay. Miller guy. Big, really? big, big man. Rest in Mac. peace. Yes. Yeah. Came out with so much oh yeah, and like they still have a lot of stuff they could release for him. Really? I remember. Yeah. Um, Mac Miller was starting to get big when I was in college. Like his first song, like uh, uh-huh. the Donald Trump song. Yeah. With the the, oh, the, yeah, the yeah. intro beat. Yeah. Like, da, 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 that da. my brother. I'm, I like started listening to him because my brother. Because like when my brother was in high school. That's, like, when he got, like, really, really popular. So I just, like, kind of followed along with big it. Big Pittsburgh guy. Yeah. And he's boys uh, yeah. with he, he is. He is. He is a big, big Pittsburgh guy. Yeah. Mine was, mine was like, Eric Church or something. In, something in so the, totally boring. In the Spotify rap, you know how it had, like, the styles of music or whatever? Mm-hmm. It said Pittsburgh rap. Really? As, like, one of the as genres. As its sub Yeah. And I was like, that's interesting. Yeah, that's, like, Wiz and yeah. Mac Miller. And I, I was a little confused by that, but. Black and yellow, man. Yeah. Mine, bit, was, mine was Kanye West. Just Kanye you know. West. Yeah. He was on. He was like number two or three. I had Kanye on just, mine as well. Also, fun fact about Pittsburgh, if you're going to be a Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh rap aficionado, they are the only city in which all three major sports oh, teams same have color. Yeah. the same colors, black that and yellow. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. So the Steelers, the Bruins, and yeah. who were we thinking? Not Bruins, Pittsburgh. Pen- or, penguins. Uh, uh, penguins. Steelers, and Penguins, and then Pirates, Pirates, Pirates are all yep. black and yellow. That's sick. So that's why, you know. More, s- more I think more, like, teams definitely. should do, like, more s- cities definitely. should do that 100%. Like, in, in Chicago, like, if everybody was red and black, like, the yeah. Bulls, yeah. I, I feel mm-hmm. like. Be and the Blackhawks are, like, kind of already there. Yeah. I mean, for the most, yeah, they're red and black. Uh, yeah. The Bears are coming to the Heights. Tell them they have yeah. to change their colors they, to get Yeah, here. true. 
Well, you tell him, Krebs. Write a letter. I will. I need to claim a policy. Amlet. I couldn't picture the bears not in orange and brown, uh, blue though. Like that's just that's True. weird. That would be, be even more weird. weird in black yeah, red, but kind of sick at the same time. Yeah. True. And with the Bulls being the best team in Chicago right now, it's just like yeah, just follow their yeah. lead. Yeah, I hear you. Follow the Bulls. Moving on to the next question here, Jack. What is a meal that you can prepare on your own? Um, I'm gonna go with a. A good breakfast. I mean, okay. I can make some good, good scrambled eggs. Uh, I can cook some sausage or, um, shout out Grandpa, <laughs> fried salami, Ooh, Italian salami. favorite. Do you ever slide over to the McCall's, make the whole family breakfast, or no? No. I have not done that. <laughs> Maybe that's something for the future. And uh, a good bagel. I mean, that's that's what I cook up usually. I, sometimes I make it for dinner. Yeah, go. breakfast, breakfast for food dinner. for dinner is seems to be a very big thing with their class. Can you do the omelet like flip? Um, I don't. Not an omelet guy. I'm not an omelet guy. Okay. Just scrambled. Yeah, it keeps it simple. I'm not an omelet guy either. Scrambled eggs are very, you know. I feel like when you're a teenager, like that's how you like your eggs, and then as you grow up and mature, like, yeah. yeah. I love people who say mature instead of mature. <laughs> as you mature, like I've I've become an over easy guy. Like okay. what, you like them scrambled, I'm sure. Yeah, scrambled. Scrambled. Scrambled, yeah. When I guarantee, if we come back and like redo this podcast when you guys are thirty five, you'll Different be like, answers. you'll be like sunny side up, <laughs> over hard, like poached. You'll have some all sorts of crazy well, stuff. Going I on. get the fried egg on my burger now, so that's, oh, okay. that's pretty good. You Fun. like when the yolk runs out of the burger? Yeah, it's pretty good. Okay. Okay. Fun fact. Yeah. yeah. Hersey statistician Jack Armstrong, statistician, statistician, you guys whatever. Have a hard time with that word. Um, teacher moment. <laughs> um, <laughs> He gets – oh, wait, no. What is it? I'm drawing a blank on what it is. He gets something so random with his eggs, and I can't – I can see Armstrong being a oh, very adventurous eater. He's a very, very, very adventurous eater. Like, probably the most out of anyone else I know. Okay. Yeah. I'm to talk to him about this. He, he, if there's something, and I don't know what it is, but he does get them differently than, okay. like, anyone else. All right. I'll have to ask. I'll have to ask. All right. On to the next question. Favorite NBA player? Right now. Alex Crusoe. That's I like that answer. Yeah, or Lonzo Ball. I I can't pick. Yeah. yeah, really. All right, so I used to like watch Lonzo when he played at Chino Hills, like him, Lamelo, and uh, D'Angelo, like when I was in like seventh grade. Yeah, and I've just seen like it's so just, cool. Like, it's when so Lamello cool. Was like in Lithuania. Yeah, stuff like that. Like I, I've, I've just been following him. Yeah, so I gotta go with Zo actually. Do you think there's a shot the three of them will ever get on the same team? Do you think Lavar's master plan will ever? I don't think Le, I don't think they can ever get Lamelo and Lonzo on the same team. But like, I, don't I, think I, I think yeah, they have a hard time. I think they have a hard too. time coexisting. Yeah, like yeah. they all need the ball. Same. Yeah. yeah, they all need the ball. Yeah. Lonzo and Lamelo are very similar in the sense that like they're point guard, point guard. So like I don't, yeah. I don't know. I feel like Lamelo is a, a bit more selfish with the ball. Sure. Yeah, probably. Yeah, and Lonzo, um, but yeah, don't think they'll ever be on the same team. Unfortunately. Yeah. I think Leangelo might make it onto the Hornets, though. If someone yeah, else, like, I gets hurt, yeah, yeah, I think he could get, like, brought up or whatever his... He's in, like, the G League. Yeah, right? I, yeah. yeah, I think so. Jack, what is your favorite song to listen to pregame? Mm. Jesus, that is a hard one. Cat and Banshee had, like, a little, like, they're, like, in cahoots. They were listening to the same song. Okay. They were trying to get Grove onto it, and Nutria and Grove was, like... <laughs> Not into it. I, <laughs> it's pretty funny. Mine is probably um, "Remember the Name" by Fort Minor. Fort Minor, what a throwback! It is a throwback. Ten percent luck. Oh yeah, 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 that's yeah, yeah, classic yeah, 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 that's a good one. That that classic I rate that one. That's good. I like that a lot. Clean, not explicit too. You got to respect. Is it that. actually? It's not explicit. Yeah. I didn't realize. Yeah. I didn't realize that either. Best trash talker on the team. Jared Drake. Yeah. I, that's who I would say. That's, I'm, taking, I'm taking my title away from Jerome, though. I, I'm taking it away. Because he, like, he he's, like, not even necessarily a trash talker. He's, like, a... I don't know. It makes me want to, like, punch him. Like, when we were playing basketball, like, in yeah, the fall, like, exactly. he would, like... He does, like... Head. Yeah, like, he does that <laughs> little thing, and it's, like, I can't even explain it. I'm giving it to Braden. I'm, I'm transferring my crown to Braden. Really? Yeah. I... He doesn't. He doesn't trash talk me when I when we play him. Do you see yeah. guys? I'll beat him. <laughs> we just will talk to anyone, no matter who they are. That's yeah. what I think is like. Yeah, that is part. That is part yeah. of the recipe of being a good trash talker. Yeah. I understand that for sure. 
for sure. <laughs> who who on the team has the best chance of being president someday? Ooh. I'm going to go with um Jeez. I think this would be the only time I'd accept a myself answer in these unscripted questions. Is that not no. what he said last week? Did they did the cat say? Yeah, I think both of them did. I did. I didn't would never want to be president. Don't think that'd be a good <laughs> fit there. Um I'm gonna have to go with um either Aiden Gazda. Yeah. That oh, was, that's that's fair. Good. Or um Josh Bonchi. Josh Bonchi, you don't have to be see like Yeah. I, I think I get what you mean. He yeah. could be a soft-spoken yeah. president. He's a soft-spoken you know, like, president. You yeah. don't necessarily need to be talking all the time. You know. Yeah. I, Speak I, softly I, and carry a big stick. He makes po- exactly. He makes power moves. Yeah. yeah. I, th- I I like the guys that pick too a lot. I yeah. didn't even think about that. I That's a good it, one. I think he just get everybody together. Yeah. You know, like get everybody I, on I, the same page. I would rally you know, behind like, Banshee. Be- I I definitely rally behind Gazda. Banshee. Fun fact about Gazda: like, extremely conscientious person. Like he always like measures twice and cuts once. If you say thank you to him in via text message, he'll always text you back. You're welcome. <laughs> All the time, <laughs> like clockwork. Like when you're totally not expecting thanks. Like he used to send me like his five minutes of threes number. I would say thanks, or he votes for brown jersey. I say thanks. He always says you're welcome, right? And some people say you're welcome, and they put y o u r welcome, yeah. which is the wrong your. Okay, right? Yeah. Oh, Guys no. that never screws it up. Yeah. The <laughs> apostrophe is always are, there. Yeah. Like he is like. A machine. It's probably like the first thing in that bar. You know that yeah. bar like under. I bet you. It's but still, you got to click and send. Yeah. That's a that's a click and send a lot of people don't make. Yeah, that's you know? really funny. I did not know that. Try him, try him. Say thank you to him for something. He'll text you back. You're welcome. I can guarantee it. Yes, that's awesome. Next one, favorite vacation spot. Oh, I like this one. Um, right now it's got to be Jamaica. I went to Jamaica Ooh. once, and it's pretty cool. That is very cool. It's just great vibes all around. Yeah, you know they got like jerk chicken, uh, reggae blasting. You a big Bob Marley guy? I'm a Bob Marley guy. Fun, sure. fun fact that you guys will not believe: I learned how to walk in Jamaica. First what? step, took really? my first steps in Jamaica. Wow, that is a true fact. Wow, yeah. Krebs that family is. album. We need yeah. proof. I, I, proof. I bet I can get proof. I think it I would can, be great to like superimpose an image onto I, the podcast. You know, right now I'm gonna text your after step. this. I'm gonna text my mom. Big, is there a picture of me walking in Jamaica? And if love she says yes, it. we I will bring it. A hundred percent. I would love to see it. I would love yeah. to see it. That's, that's a cool story. <laughs> <laughs> All right, last one here, Jack. What is your favorite drill to do in practice, and what is your least favorite drill? Uh, I'm going to start with my favorite one. We actually haven't done it this year. I don't know why, but it's the sam- stampede drill. Yeah. Which whips the pass in at the wing, and you go uh, attack the basket, and then you got someone in the corner and someone on the wing against three guys who are recovering to play defense. Okay. And they got to match up. It's like a quick decision-making yeah. drill. Yeah, so I like that one. Get a quick shot up or, yeah, make a quick decision. Least yeah. favorite uh, is B-line passing. It's <laughs> tiring and it's repetitive. I would definitely say the same. But, <laughs> you, honestly, you got to do it. You got to do it. Totally. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I understand. Especially at, especially at the beginning of the season, just get the fundamentals down, catch passes. You know, it's play. funny, though, that you say that. Like, and I was talking to Andrew Wagner at the beginning of the year, and I'm like, hey, what do you, you know, what do we need to work on? He's like, you need to do beeline passing for, like, 15 minutes a day. And yeah. usually it's three minutes. Like, he's like, you need to, like, they need to work on catching, pivot, ripping. He's like, and, like, again, he probably hated it as a player, too, but he's like, you need to do it, like, yeah. now. So it's funny, like you understand the purpose of it too, which is what Jack alluded to. So yeah. Well, that's gonna wrap it up for the unscripted. Before we go here, Coach, do you have any questions? I have a few questions Dad. for Jack. Yeah. So you know, obviously, with it being Wheeling Week, Jack is a MacArthur Middle School okay. grad. So you know, this rivalry between the Cats and Huskies kind of hits close to home for him. Um, and it is a girl boy doubleheader. So first shout out to the girls team. Congratulations, Katie, Katie Idol, on her thousand point. Congratulations to all the girls. You know, I have Kelsey and Megan Merwicky in class, both, you know, first class students, first class people come out and support the girls at six o'clock. But an unknown fun fact is that Jack's first girlfriend at MacArthur was a wheeling or is a How really you know girls that? basketball How do you know player. that? I've I so harvest my research, Krebs. Oh I've right. So, Jack, who is that person? And are you nervous about maybe seeing her before the game with 
you know, McCall's presence looming over the Carter Gymnasium. Oh, uh, this is funny. Uh, her <laughs> name is Sarah Aranda. Okay. Um, no, I am not nervous. That was, it was in sixth grade, which is about six years ago or seven years okay. ago. Okay. So, no, I am not nervous. I know the girls will give them a whooping. Um, Facts. But... Yeah, I'm not. I'm not nervous about. Will that. Will there be like a like? So say you guys like run into each other in the foyer area. Is it a is it a fist pound? Is it a hug? Is it a COVID wave? What What do you have planned for? For sure, a COVID wave. For sure, a COVID wave. Give him a little. <laughs> okay. okay, the awkward teenage COVID wave. Yes. All right. Um, another question. So, Jack, you know maybe unbeknownst to some of our listeners, currently has a 4.0 unweighted GPA, has never gotten a B in high school. We talked before this podcast, it is in a little bit of jeopardy, um, needs to do well on his you psych. You told me this yesterday. His psych final and his Spanish final. What has been the hardest A that you've achieved so far over the course of mm-hmm. high school? Good question. Um, actually, freshman year, honors geometry, I suck at math. I've taken a me few AP classes, but hasn't even been in the AP classes. Honors geometry, freshman year, I was sitting at like an 89.0. In order to get an A, I needed to get like a 97 or a 98 on the final, and I got like a 99. Wow. That's cl- that's, prime prime time time that's clutch. That's like Kobe. Yeah. Pontiac game-changing performance that's, by Jack. That's, that's clutch. I, I just clutched it And up. then last, um, I just want to direct all our listeners, like if you've never met Jack and like, you know, want to get – you know, a kind of a feel for his accolades. If you go by the main office in the the principal's office, there is a wall that features Jack on the Hispanic National Honor Society. Um, so, you know, shout out Jack for his work there. All right. So, tell us about your Hispanic heritage that got you on there. Uh, well, I'm I look pretty white, right? But I'm actually like 25% Mexican. Um, my mom is 50%, and my grandma is 100%. Uh, my great grandma moved from Guadalajara in Mexico to Indiana. She worked at the steel mills in Indiana, oh. and that's where our family kind of originated. And then uh, my mom also grew up in Indiana, and she moved here. So that's that's uh, wow. my origins. Very, very cool. No, nothing I, like a good origin story yeah, wow. on a podcast, you know? Yeah. Like, so yeah. those, you know, you young girls out there really researching, you know, how do I get a conversation with Jack Genualdi? Well, you got to know his origin story. You know, you can maybe talk about the steel mills, talk about Guadalajara, um, you know. Yeah. I really hope someone says something to you about it. Oh, for sure. I, they really, I really hope someone does. For sure. Kat said, like, 15 people stopped him in the hallway and asked him about, you know, his conversation that we had about Cassidy in here. Like, this is right. this is a viral production, man, in the Hersey community. Yeah, feel free to ask me any questions. Stop him in the hallway, answer. ask him. I'll have Miss Becker ask you, you know. When Miss Becker knows something, obviously everybody knows soon. Oh, yeah, because because, you know, she's got a booming voice, so. All right? Yep. That's all I got. I'm out of questions. Okay, well, that's all we have as well. Do you have any shout-outs? Yeah, yeah, do you have any shout-outs? Mm, um, Good, thank you. Uh, let's go uh, shout-out Dad if you're watching this. Shout-out Jeff. <laughs> shout-out Jeff. Low Jeff. Key, shout out Jeff. Low-key great musician. Big Red Hot Chili Peppers fan. Ooh, okay. Yeah. He's in a Red Hot Chili Peppers cover band. What's the name of the band? Uh, Funky Monks. Can Ooh, we find them like on that. YouTube or Spotify? Uh, you can find them on uh, YouTube probably. You could watch one of their performances. All right. And I'll let you know if they have any around here. All right. Shout out your old uh, YouTube account with Brayden. You guys are doing ball handling drills. Oh, my gosh. No, that's an Instagram account. Instagram oh, account. At Never Enough Ball. <laughs> <laughs> Made it in about fifth grade. It was awesome. Okay. Nice. Shout out, of course, First Lady Anna McCall. Shout sh- Anna. What? Sorry. Get out of here. Yeah. Shout out Kelly McCall. Kelly First McCall. Lady. My fault. <laughs> my fault. All right. Well, also, I have a shout out as well. We are live streaming the Wheeling game on Friday. So if you, for some reason, cannot make it in person, be sure to check that out. Me and Krebs will be on the mic. We'll be sure to bring it to you guys. Uh, With all that being said, though, thank you guys for watching this edition of Hersey Hoops, and we will see you in the next one.